Okay, Michael, I'm so happy that you're able to do a call with me here and just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. I'm Michael Maciel. I am a priest ordained in a mystical Christian order called the Holy Order of Mans. Uh, I've been a priest for over 50 years now. Um, what uh, uh, the difference between uh, regular Christianity, and you might say, and mystical Christianity is that uh, mysticism in general refers to the kingdom of heaven within. It's not belief-based, it's not doctrine-based, it's experience-based. So everything we do from meditation to prayer to sacraments to solar initiations is based on experience. It's not, not belief. So we, it, I should say I, um, I center my focus on meditation. I call my form of meditation, radical meditation. And what it involves is um, going within, which you know fits with the kingdom of heaven within. But uh, that's a, a phrase that I think a lot of people stumble with. Where do we go when we go within? So what I do is I identify this area behind me, which is like a core of light, a core of energy, uh, spiritual energy, and I back up into it. And as I do, I come to realize that that core is actually within me, but it just, it feels like it's behind me. So as I back up into it, I automatically recenter myself because this whole physical body organism experience in the physical world is kind of like a projection. I, I get now why people say it's, you know, the, the world is unreal. Uh, I don't think that's phrased very well, but, but all of this is a projection and we think we're in the projection when in reality we exist right behind within this core of light and power that constitutes not who we are so much as what we are. So by getting in touch with that, I get re-centered into a, into a space that then from there, I can see the world much more clearly and I can see the relationships between things more clearly and I can feel them. I can feel the energy of it. So all of my history has brought me to this point where I, what I, the work that I do is trying to, is I try to get people to a place where they can actually experience God and not talk about God. Because once we experience the divine or the, which is really within us, right? This is, this is our true, the central core of our nature is divine. Once we can actually experience the movement of energy within us that comes from that source, then we become more fully alive, more fully expressed. Our understanding increases, the depth of our perception increases. So that's what I do. And I, I do it online. I, I have a website, michaelmaciel.com. And I'm in the process of developing a, a course uh, about radical meditation. And, uh, and I have another course that will be coming online here uh, by the end of the month. So. That's kind of it in a nutshell. And oh, oh, I guess I should explain too. Uh, I live, um, uh, I call it my expeditionary lifestyle. As you can see, I'm in my, uh, in my wheelhouse, you might say. It's, uh, it's a mobile, um, I live in a van. <laughs> I'm one of those people, <clears throat> but it's a really nice van. <laughs> And oh. <laughs> I right now I'm in a in a place called uh, Quartzsite, Arizona, and there are thousands of people here. We call them snowbirds because they escape the cold weather from the north. They come down here in the very southern part of the United States, where today it's like 70 degrees. So 
that's uh, and then and then the rest. Of it, I'll I'll be leaving here uh, in a couple of uh, a few more days, uh, going to South Carolina and Florida, where I I have so many people that I know or whom I'm associated with all across the country. That that's why I am I'm doing this uh, this lifestyle is so that I can visit all of these people and you know uh, generate uh, interest and activity. Uh, in their spiritual practice and in what they're trying to do locally. Uh, so, you know, I'll speak at events and uh, book signings, uh, that kind of thing. I have a couple of books that I've written. So, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, that's so cool that you're doing the van life. How long has that been going on? Oh, about a year and a half now. Okay. So it's real. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, that's awesome. That's, uh, that's, I was, I was in my van for two years before I moved to where I am now. And the, I'd say the, the biggest thing I miss about Canada is that life. So <laughs> oh, I am, yeah. I'm going to live vicariously through you today. Um, okay. okay. So I would love to talk about meditation. Um, but just before that, you were talking about the, the divine and the energy and the presence and the light just behind you and we hear people talk about you know the higher self or our holy spirit is that what they're talking about can you kind of elaborate well you know everybody has a different idea of what what those terms mean um the uh the way that i introduce this this might help answer the, the your question there, we have these axis points in us. We have a vertical axis, we have a fore and aft axis, and we have a side to side axis. I call it the axis mundi, which means center of the world. So I have uh, exercises designed to, uh, to make you really aware of these axes. And once you even put your attention on them briefly, it, they tend to stabilize us. They stabilize us in the world. And it gives us uh, uh, a point of, uh, it's like your, your sacred space or your holy of holies. And as you form them, then you find that the center of where all of those axes uh, converge is like right in the center of you. And so by potentializing the vertical axis, which is like reaching up into infinity and connecting with that power and having it come down and enlivening the, our internal core, our, our core of light, which every human body has. And, and when we don't have a human body, that core is still there as is the, the, this axis grid. So, and as, it's, as we potentialize it by just putting our attention on it, that lights us up that gives us the energy we need to get up and out of a rut that, that this projection, this, this physical organism and all of the circumstances related to it, uh, it, it enables us to break free from it and to become more aware of the central core of light. And as we enter into that light, then all of the centers in the body and in the head start to light up and and it enables us to jump up a level in a, a level of vibration a level like another octave of our being and once those centers start to open up and and wake up then the entire world and our, both internally and externally shifts we begin to see and understand and know things that we previously could not no understand or see so the whole point to me and, and you know i've been meditating for a long time and i know people who've been meditating for their whole lives and sometimes it's like a train that never ends you know you never get off that train and i don't like that i don't like doing things that just seem endless i want i want results right if I'm going to meditate, I want something to happen in me. I want transformation. 
I want something that's going to lift me up and out of the rut. Because this life and you know our mindset, our circumstances, they can be such a deep rut. And we get stuck there. So I'm all about getting unstuck. And the faster, the better. So, so when people talk about the Holy Spirit, I, I think if they're in touch with it at all, they realize that it's a power. It's, a, it's an energy. It's something that's intensely alive. It radiates. It's bright. It has light. And it's within them. That's, but that's it. You know, that's like so many people, that's as far as they go. They have an inkling of it, but they don't have the, the technology to get to it and, ha and really connect with it and have it change them. So that's kind of a roundabout way of answering your question. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And so you said that this light, this vertical access, this is what goes on after we die, after this, we leave the body. Well, this is when we're in the body, whether we're in the body or out of the body. This is, this is the constant of us. If we were an equation, that would be the constant. That's like, that's what we are. And then, so the body, you know, regardless of what, even what kind of body we have, right? I mean, we don't know. We don't know where we go, where we come from, where we're going. We could be some other planet for all we know. <laughs> but wherever we go, that goes with us because that is us. And, and in some way that has been uh, created. I mean, the whole thing has been set up so that each of us is like an individual, individualized um, fractal image, you might say, of the whole. So we carry within us like a reflection of the whole thing. So, and, and like I say, somehow, we're not sure how or why, I mean, who, who can say how we became individuated like that? Well, all we know is that we, that we were and we are. The, each person is a unique expression of the divine, if you want to put it in spiritual terms like that. So. Okay, awesome. So what do you tell your students? What do you tell people when they haven't yet jumped right into the world of meditation? They're not yet in touch with this axis. Where do people start? Where do everyday people start? Well, I was talking with my, my cousin's husband and uh, he's an older guy and, and not especially spiritually minded. Not you know he's a good person and and uh, he might be a little bit religious but even on the fringe of that and he but he's suffering from a lot of back pain so I wanted to talk to him about dissociating from that pain and so I I, I asked him to consider you know where are you he says normally people locate themselves in their forehead like we. You know, our thoughts, our consciousness, they all seem to be congested into our forehead, either there or in our eyes. And he got that instantly. He said, yes, I see that. Because there's nothing religious or even spiritual about that. It's something immediately that we can, anybody can identify with and experience. So I said, take that awareness that you sense that's all mushed up right here Move it to the back of your head. He did. I said, okay, now move it back a little farther. He did. And the pain in his back started to lessen. So this is like, you know, and I've used this in the dentist chair, <laughs> you know, everybody's favorite experience. So, so I'm sitting in the chair and doing something really annoying. And I just start to back up, you know, and I see myself from a little bit of distance from behind and the pain level drops noticeably i won't say it disappears i mean i think in order to do this you'd have to really practice it and get really good at it but in the way 
the way that most people have experienced it is in trauma. Uh, there was a story about a guy, and this is not a pleasant story. So, uh, and I don't know if he was in South America or Central America or Southeast Asia, but he was captured and was being tortured. And he was in this compound and, and he had, you know, for days was undergoing this torture routine. And he was in his cell one night and he could hear in the next room, somebody screaming, somebody being tortured. And then he realized it was him. That's how dissociated the trauma had made him. So we know that's a reality. We know that people do that. They fragment, they, they split apart so they don't have to deal directly with that with that trauma. So if that can happen organically or naturally, uh, I think we should be able to do it consciously and deliberately. So, so there's obvious advantages to doing that, like, you know, to get away from trauma, but also that dissociate, that dissociation is how we get to the next chamber in our being, how, you know, to get unstuck from this projection world that we live in, which it, in, I'm not saying that the world is unreal. I'm just saying that we get, we're too involved in it. And so by this dissociation, we can back away from it. And that gives us a whole new perspective and a level of power and agency and ability that we didn't even know was possible. So, so that's the kind of the, that's how I will approach someone who has no orientation towards spirituality at all. All they have to be is just a, just an average level of self-aware, right? Enough to know that where their consciousness is bunched up. And, and if I can hit that, then it's, an, it's, an, it's a walk in the park after that. Because I think this is something every single person has access to. This, regardless of intelligence, regardless of education, regardless of spiritual orientation or any other kind of orientation, I think every living human being can identify with that almost instantly. So that to me is, it, that's worth pursuing, so. So this sounds like something that somebody could be doing with their eyes open. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. In fact, the course that I'm working on right now, which I've committed to getting up and running by the end of this month, is uh, it's called car yoga. Meditations you can do while driving. And, and it's, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it, with the emphasis on open eyed meditation, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so as an example, one, uh, one of the, I call them awareness techniques, is that um, you don't have this problem probably where you live, but here in northern hemispheres right now, a lot of slippery roads, snow and ice, and that can be terrifying. If you're driving along, you, you, feel, like, you feel like you're separate from your car and your car is separate from the road, and it's a very unsettling feeling. I grew up in snow and ice. So I found that if I put my attention on the four wheels of my car, just really the same way you would, like when you sit in the chair that you're uncertain of, you sit in a chair for the first time, you kind of move around a little bit just to make sure all four legs are firmly on the floor and that nothing's gonna break or shift or anything like that. I become aware of the, of the wheels of my car in that same way. And when I do, I immediately get a sense of the road. It's like, it's like the saying flying by the seat of your pants, right? I get immediately connected and I feel the weight of the car on the wheels and the wheels connected to the road. And my discomfort with driving on a slippery surface just vanishes. I get an immediate sense of where I'm at. So, so that's like an, an awareness technique. 
and then I have uh, 10 or 11 more of those that are like that and more, you know, some more elaborate, some even simpler. So, so that's, well, how, that's was, how to connect it. <laughs> there was a technique that um, really stuck with me from one of the classes that I, I did in one of your groups. And it was the exercise where there's like a light pillar or a light axis that goes above the head, you know, to infinity and then through the body and then below to the center of the earth. And yes. there was a focus on um, a bright sun, a bright light in the heart center and in the solar plexus, just around, just above the belly button. And so my feedback on that practice, I, I, I use that a lot. I was at the time living in an area um, in Zanzibar where I would go for a run in the morning on a, on a long side road. And the, a lot of times the local people there, you know, it's just kind of in their culture to stop and try and talk and um, even, even like you know, tap you on the shoulder where you're running. And I just, <laughs> I just wanted to go for runs in the morning. I just didn't feel like, you know, interacting. So I'd get up really early and what I would do is I would envision that light column and I would just kind of focus on that while I was running. And it was like night and day. It was like people couldn't even see me. It was like people couldn't even see me. They were in their own vibration and I was in my vibration and it was like I was passing them and I never, never had a problem. People would almost give me a wide berth. Um, so these practices, they sound really simple, but I just want to say, that they're unbelievably powerful. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's what I find too. Yeah, I de I developed that, uh, and I've, I've since come to find out that I'm not the only one. This is uh, this is known and taught by a number of other teachers, but this what I call the Axis Mundi. Uh, I used to practice it uh, for an hour at a time, walking around a high school track because there's no distractions. And as I was walking, I really firmly got that vertical axis and the fore and aft and the side to side. And I would just stay with it for like an hour. And I did that for months and it became really solid. And then, uh, and then later I you know, developed it into it. Oh, I, I know. I, had, I was teaching a, a class for, to a group of about 20 people for, for a while and uh, uh, in meditation and, and other things. And one of the women in the class said that she had such a hard time meditating because every time she sat down and closed her eyes and started to go within, she would start to, uh, her body would start to sway and kind of do this circular thing so much so that she had to open her eyes to make it stop. So I gave her that. I gave her that exercise. She did it. And the next day she reported, that's gone does not happen to me anymore and it never returned so yes it's powerful it's very powerful because her her physical oscillation like that is uh you know that's how it manifested on the physical level but it, that kind of thing will also manifest on the mental level and the emotional level and the spiritual level so so you, if if anything gets you off balance and is disruptive in that way you want to you want to get a fix on that you want to you want to make that uh you want that to go away because you want to be focused you want to be center you want to be stable and there's no there's no advantage to being blown around by the wind you know on any of those levels so we want to be stable we want to be like like the the term axis mundi means it means center of the world so you want to find your center, your holy of holies, and that's where you want to live. And then from there, interact with your life. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and thanks for that, uh, that story of what happened to you when running, because, yeah. because you know, we've got this toroidal uh, energy field around us, which, you know, you know what I mean by that? It's like a, a cross-section of an apple the energy comes out and around and, and then up through the perineum and then to the top of the head. Uh, that's a very powerful energy field. And by, by tapping into the vertical axis of that, what you're doing is you're potentializing that energy field. You're making it stronger. 
and and that's you know w- when you were running and the people who ordinarily would be able to interact with you could no longer do that because you're on a different vibratory plane so to speak you know you're you're just there's not a fit there's not a uh, there's no way for them to connect with you so they just ignored you would you be able to explain that that um vertical pillar of light and sun in the heart briefly so that people could take that with them after watching this yes yes so so as you put the your attention on the vertical axis and you get the real sense that that it's lit up and it's lit up in the same way that uh you know if you're in a large building and all of the electricity for that building comes in through one central trunk big wire right coming right off of the the city's power grid you can't see the the electricity moving through that big wire but you know it's there and if you sometimes you can even feel it you know because it'll have a vibration to it that's the kind of feeling you get with this core of energy that it's alive it's powerful it's it's vibrating on a very high frequency but it's vibrating and so once you get in touch with that that lights you up and then as it's coming this way it's going to awaken everything on a a lateral plane at right angles to it so as that energy comes through you and it comes through the heart center it's immediately going to radiate out in all directions that's the sun that's the brightness of that and the stronger the vertical axis the stronger this horizontal axis will be and that's where we get the cross right that's what the cross is is a symbolic representation of what and who we are which is this energy field and the in the core of it, it and that that brightens it up and as the heart opens then everything changes right it the, because because love is connection you know you're able to connect with people because you're you're coming from the heart so so that's and and how that will manifest for you for for me for anybody will be individual right because we all have different connections and different ways of expressing but whatever it is it's going to light up big time so it's just a matter of trying it and then seeing how it works Well, it does. <laughs> it does work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, can you give us some of your thoughts on the topic of prayer? And a lot of us have been exposed to, you know, prayer in a really dry way from organized religion. And for people that want a little bit more of a dynamic connection to prayer, what do you recommend? Okay, so there are several different kinds of prayer. Um, you know, we hear that gratitude, you know, is really important that we that we embrace gratitude and express gratitude. That's actually one kind of prayer, uh, and it has its it has a uh, it has a, a powerful open door policy, right? When we're great, grateful for what we have in our life, everything tends to smooth out we start to receive more of what we need because of the gratitude. The opposite of that would be resentment or you know, fear, those kinds of things. Those shut us down and the worse that gets, the worse it gets. You know, they're both feedback loops. So there's also the kind of prayer of just um, adoration. It's like, it's like going to the coast and seeing a sunset and just your whole being, every cell in you just goes, wow. Like you're just swept up in just the magnificence of it all. That's a prayer of glory, a prayer of adoration. That's just, that's, that's what every human being experiences at some time. So, but then the other kind of prayer is uh, where you want to change the conditions of your life. And so, um, so what what you need to do for that to actually have something appear in your life that's not in your life now 
is to first and foremost know what the hell that is what do you want you know i mean <laughs> and ask anybody hey what do you want what do you really want and a lot of people just draw a blank right you know it's like uh it's like they're caught they don't they don't know they don't know what they want so an easy hack for that you know a workaround is don't ask yourself what you want ask yourself what do i love everybody can answer that immediately what do you love what you love is what you want it may not be what you think you want because we get complicated with that right but if we really focus in and identify what it is we love that can align our whole being and once we really when we're true to that you know i love that part in the book of revelation where it, it the angel says to the one city he says uh, you're doing great you're you know you guys are on track and all of that but i have one thing against you and that is you've left your first love and i think that you know because that whole book is symbolic right it's all about the person's inner state and where they're moving from there and the and all the problems that can come up as a result of trying to get out of the rut right so when we really identify what it is we love and then we center our lives around that and we're true to that and we don't accept compromises in that regard our life changes and all the things that we want then because our wants will come into alignment with what we love they will start to appear in our lives if not precisely categorically right characteristically so so that is so you, you know i think we can just we can boil it all down to a simple axiom that uh every thought you think is a prayer every action you take is a prayer everything you think feel do whatever that's all prayer because that's what happens right what it's cause and effect whatever you're doing whatever you're thinking those are all causes and the the universe will tend to mirror back to you whatever cause you're feeding into it so when we separate or dissociate from all of that stuff and we back up and we really connect with what we love and this is coming from the heart center it changes everything prayer that's prayer that change in prayer changes everything now the the religions the churches they know that but it's all been institutionalized and they they're, they're herding cats right they're herding cats meaning that that this is so subjective and so subtle that they they densify it they they dumb it down you might say and say okay pray this way and do this and do that <clears throat> and that just prepares people essentially to have the breakthrough to realize hey this is all happening inside of me and once they get to that level then they leave the church <laughs> they're no longer religious they become spiritual right <laughs> so which may be why they don't teach it that way come to think of it hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay so kind of piggybacking off the last thing that you said about focusing on what you love praying for what you love you know especially in the last few years which have been you know so wild on our planet people's a lot of people's hearts have begin to get began begun to get more cold um, and even people who have had you know open hearts in the past find themselves shutting down their heart with with all these things going on and in my opinion it's really hard to know what you really love if your heart is in a real shut down way and it's hard to kind of work with that magnetic field it's hard to work with you know attraction um what would you say to people who are finding themselves with a very shut down heart center well you know the fear is the is the 
big thing, right? Uh, fear, fear. Uh, I think that fear is the opposite of love, not apathy, not hate, but fear. <clears throat> so that's the first thing we need to work on, right? And what's, you know, fear, we have to learn to trust. And that's a big one, right? So, and what can you trust? I mean, nothing on the outer part of you, part of us, everything is changing all the time. So you can't trust that. So you have to find a way to trust in yourself. And by, by locating this, what you really are, which is this column of light that runs right up your core, that you can trust. That never goes away. So as we, as we really go into that and you know, really backing up into it, because you can't, you can't approach this directly. If, 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 I, if I say go within, what you're going to do is then turn around and look to where within is. <laughs> and then what you've done is you've taken what's out front and put it behind you and called that within when it's not, right? So the only way you can do it is to, and, and here's where, you know, some of the religions get it right. They say, trust in God, just fall into the arms of Christ, the way that a fundamental uh, preacher would say. You kind of, you have to just relax and dissolve into this light that you, but it feels like it's behind you. So you just gradually more and more learn to trust that and the more you trust especially if you're connecting in with the very core of your being then all the fears are going to evaporate you'll become less and less afraid because all of that you begin to dissociate from all that stuff that's going on in the world you know it's going on out there it doesn't really connect with you and the more that happens the more you trust and then the more the more agency you have to deal with the things that that are worrisome. So that's it, you know, it's trust. Trust is key. It's key to spiritual work, but you have to have something you can, you, you can trust. The only thing you can really trust ultimately is God and God and you are one in that space, in that core. That's where everything comes, collapses into oneness. And that's, most trustworthy thing there is. It's the best on earth. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where it's at. Um, you said about falling into Christ. And, you know, a lot of people, when they hear the word Christ, they think of a man. They think of, you know, a man that's connected to one specific religion. And can you talk more about what some people call the Christ impulse or the Christ Sophia essence. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because what we're talking about is not a man, uh, not a historical person, but a level of consciousness, Christ consciousness, which is like Buddha consciousness or Krishna consciousness. It's that level of consciousness where uh, the, our sense of separation from God, from the world, from ourselves, from each other, all of that separation starts to disappear and we realize that we're one with everything, that there is no separation. And once we get a sense of that, then see every religion has its way of articulating that. That's what they're all talking about. There, you know, there's, there's all, all the different levels all point to that. It's like a pyramid, you know, and that Christ consciousness is at the top of the Christian pyramid. Buddha consciousness is at the top of the Buddhist pyramid and so on. That pyramid, however, has been stratified and barriers have been set, not intentionally usually, it's just because people, they can only know what they can know, right? And if they don't, have the 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 teachings to rely on that can get them to the top then they're going to get stuck at these various levels and that's why people are rebelling so much against you know against religion because they've hit that ceiling that glass ceiling inside that pyramid 
and they say, I, you know, I got to go, I got to go higher up. And so they find a way around that barrier. So what, what I think of as the Christ, and it, this is not just me, I mean, it's, it's very much in Rosicrucianism, for instance, um, it's the sun. And I don't mean, you know, the ball of gas at the center of the solar system. I mean the spiritual presence of the sun. If we look at the sun it, with spiritual eyes, we see something way more than just a astronomical phenomenon. It's like, it's like this huge center of consciousness and intelligence that suffuses all of the solar system that organizes the whole thing that's a it's a living presence but it's 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 alive in a way that is far above what we can conceive with this right it's the same light that is in every living thing it's the life principle it's the as you said the christ impulse yeah i i think that you know the sun is, is all this energy coming out from the sun and it it strikes the earth and rings it like a bell. So the earth vibrates with the Christ impulse. It's vibrating with it. And that, that secondary vibration is what, is what enables all living things to form their various forms and shapes and method, you know, they're, all the living things. That's, that's the force that through the green fuse drives the flower as the poet said i think it was dylan thomas the force that through the green fuse drives the flower drives my green age is what he said so it's like he's identifying he's reaching a point of oneness consciousness christ consciousness and where he realizes that the life in the flower is the same life that's in him so that's instant oneness with all of nature. And then when we realize that there's a cosmic dimension of that, then we realize that we're one with the whole cosmos. There is no separation. And then it's like, <laughs> there's just no end to that. You just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and yet it's all focused right in you and you just come alive, right? You, and, so in everything that, that, in every way that you can benefit by having greater vitality, that will manifest in your life. So get religion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so people, yeah. So people are hitting feelings with religion all over the place and you see evidence of that on social media on youtube on you know the explosion in you know the new age community which is full of all kinds of different ideas um and i i feel it can be a bit of a trap sometimes um so this is kind of like a long question but it, it'll make sense when i'm done um rudolf steiner said one time we must take three steps in purifying our integrity before we take one step forward spiritually. So instead of getting caught in, you know, fancy ideas and random channelers and all this kind of thing, in order to kind of move quickly on the spiritual path and, and connect with, you know, invisible beings, can you talk a bit about the purification of the heart and integrity and how that actually can really launch someone's spiritual development in a real way? Yeah. So <clears throat> when I was a kid, I was a, a ski racer, um, you know, downhill, giant slalom, slalom. And I don't know if you've ever skied, but when you start skiing at like 60, 70 miles an hour down a mountain, that's, you know, with trees on all sides and the snow is icy and you're just going like a bat out of hell. That can be terrifying. You know, I asked one of my coaches, I said, you know, how do I get over this? How do I, how do I muster the courage to do this? 
and they said strength you got to have strength you got to be strong your legs have got to be strong your core muscles have to be strong you have to really be on your game get physical get strong so what you're talking about is like the equivalent of that so if if you don't have integrity then as you light up on the inside and you you're your sense of personal presence, your, your sense of personal agency in the world, your ability to, um, to attract the things that you want and keep the things you don't want away, you know, just a, all normal stuff, right? What a person who's vital and alive is, is naturally capable of doing. If you don't have integrity, you're going to cause a lot of problems. And any problem that you cause in the world is going to come back on you. There's just no getting around it. Nobody ever gets away with anything. And it's a, it's a fool's dream to think that we do because eventually it all catches up because we become the way we treat other people. We become that way. And then we start to vibrate like that. And then we're gonna draw the same thing we're putting out back to us. You know, if you're if you're a criminal or if you're always if you're manipulating people, if you're trying to use other people, you're you're headed down a you're on a self-destructive path. It just takes a little time to realize it, but it will catch up with you. You'll be ostracized. You'll be hated. And then your your whole world just goes to hell. So. Only a person who who is either careless or reckless or doesn't care or maybe even malicious would give a person the tools that would light them up if they didn't have that part of their life somewhat under control. Because if you're impulsive, then you go and you start exploring that it's a pretty awful place. It's just not good. It's not good for the person. Why on somebody? Why would you? It's like giving a teenager the uh, a, a 500 horsepower car. You know, 16 years old. Here, go have fun. You know, what could possibly go wrong, right? So, so spiritual teachers over the millennia have realized that when you light somebody up or you show them how they can light themselves up, more specifically, um, they better be ready for that. You just have to be ready for it. You don't want to be have murderous fantasies, you know, or or be envious or or greedy or gluttonous or any of those things, you know, consumed by lust, you know, because uh, all of that, all you're doing is you're giving you're throwing uh, gasoline on the fire. So just out of compassion, people don't do that. That said, the schedule now demands that we speed things up. We've got to get these teachings out because there are too many good people who are stuck in that pyramid, right? They can't get through that barrier. We, it's, it's not like throwing caution to the wind, but it's, it's like saying, hey, get serious. Here are the keys to that car. Now go, now here's how to drive it. But if you don't get in the car and learn how to drive it, the world is going to shake itself apart around you and you're going to go with it. So the, it's, it's like a, an, an emergency situation. We have to teach these things. We have to teach them openly. And they're being taught openly anyway. And you're either going to be attracted to those teachings or not. So there's kind of a built-in safety anyway. But at the same time, we keep an eye on each other. And if, if, if you're in a spiritual teacher position like I am, then I watch the people I work with, you know, one-on-one -on -one with this. I watch them very carefully and closely. And when things like that come up, then we make those course adjustments, right? We kind of go back and pick up the pieces. So all of that's important. But what's most important right now is that people get a real sense of their of their own inner divinity, where it is, how to get to it, how to bring it forth. 
It's like in the gospel according to Thomas, Jesus says, if you bring forth that which is within you, that which is within you will save you. If you do not bring forth that which is within you, that which is within you will destroy you. So that's where we're at. That's where the world is at right now. I mean, it's never, we have never been at a crossroads like we are right now in on so many different levels in, in you know, arenas, some climate, uh, politics, uh, culture, uh, uh, personal spirituality, every, everything is up for review. And none of it is looking very good. <laughs> so, so we got to get real, <laughs> get real like right now. So that's why I'm teaching radical meditation because it's radical, right? It's away from the center the, you know, the tried and true or what, you know, the institutionalized form of religion. It's got to go. You got to make it real. You got to bring it on the in, into the inside and move with that. <laughs> this question, it's, it's a little bit on a different topic. How did you know, or when did you know what was going on when you realized, you know, I think I'm a mystic. I think I'm a, a sensitive and I, I need to, I need to figure this out. Like, were you just sailing through life? Was there trouble happening? What was going on? Well, while it's true that most people find God at the end of their rope, you know, it, it, to dire straits, you know, then they're forced to, like, there are no atheists in the foxhole, that kind of thing. I think that uh, there, there is what we call the path of initiation. And the path of initiation, going back to that pyramid analogy, an initiation is when you reach that barrier that prevents you from getting reaching the top of the pyramid, you find a way around it, then you're in a whole new chamber within that pyramid. That's an initiation. That's where everything is different. Everything looks different, feels different. You realize that it's not just a difference of perspective, you have changed on the inside something about you has grown larger so and as that that's that's what an initiation is so the very first initiation we can call it the first because this is where people find out what you're asking the very first initiation is when a person looks around at the world they live in themselves their family what they're up to and there's this inner realization that this is all fake. This is all limited. There is something more. That is an awakening. That's the spirit. That's the first initiation. You wake up to the fact that there is much more to life than what you can see. Once a person, once that gets its roots into you, then you're, you're off and away. You're going to find out what is going on. That's going to lead you to things like meditation and prayer and, you know, or following your bliss or, or climbing a high mountain or whatever it is. Because what you're doing, like when you climb a mountain, is you want to get out of the world, right? It's a, it's a perfect metaphor. You want to you want to get higher. You want to get to a higher perspective. You want to know. You want to get closer to that which is the greatest. And so that's what that that's where most people realize that. And that can happen through through trauma, uh, through um, through joy, you know, through bliss, through any number of ways. It can happen with psychedelics, you know, which is how it worked with so many people. You know, they, they get blasted out of their uh, default mode network and they look around to, at the world and say, oh, my God, there is a lot more here than I realized. Right. <laughs> so whatever road takes you there, that's what starts you on the spiritual path. You know, what I'm seeing is not all there is. And so. What would you say to someone who, who is finding themselves at the end of the rope 
and they're taking a look around them and saying, whoa, like this is, this is, uh, a lot of this is fake. And, but yet haven't quite connected with, you know, what we would call presence or divinity. What would you say to kind of guide them forward? What's the next step? Well, that's, um, you know, they're going to be drawn. You know, at that point, you're just automatically drawn to what you're asking because that's a big ask. That's a big question. And questions are like a negative polarity. They draw stuff to us. So if you re that's why they say, you know, you find God at the end of your rope because there's nothing, you're, what else are you going to do, right? You're like, I, that's the point where you reach where I can know, there's nothing I can do to get me out of this. So help, right? Help me. That's, that's the prayer in the foxhole. Help me. And that is a very powerful draw that will draw to you whatever it is you need. I've been doing this kind of work for a long time. And so I've been perfecting and working ways to really give people exactly what they need to shorten that path, you know, because I hate long paths. I'm for short suffering, not long suffering. I, I, because the energy we need now is, is so available because the whole energy of the whole world is being amped up almost daily. There's just more energy available to us spiritually. So, so by tapping into that, then that can raise a person immediately up to the next level where they can get, get out of the mud and into motion. And then it becomes a uh, just a process of seeking and finding what works for you, and whatever it is that you that's up for you, whatever it is you're up to in your life, that's your that's your work table. That's what you've got to work with. So all of spirituality should be has to be relevant to what you're doing. If it's not relevant get rid of it you know that that's why there's so much uh, criticism now of new age teachings because who cares what's going on in the pleiades you know i want to know what i'm going to do today <laughs> i got to get to work you know <laughs> what, what the hell am i going to do when i get there you know <laughs> that's what's pertinent that's what's relevant and and so by waking up spiritually that's where you that's your field of engagement that's where you can actually uh, learn about yourself, learn about God, learn about power, force, and energy, how it works in your life. And then you can go to the Pleiades. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds all right, too. <laughs> so it sounds like at the end of the rope, which feels pretty, pretty awful when you're there, is actually like a huge potential gateway. And yeah, Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, it's a dark night of the soul. It's, it's set. You know, I like to say that uh, there's nothing more solid than rock bottom. You can't go any farther down. You're there. And it has such a wonderful feeling of solidity because then you have something to push off of. You know, if you jump into a very deep swimming pool and it's way deeper than you thought it was and you're, but you're kind of stuck you know, 10, 12 feet down and the bottom is still, you know, that's a horrible place to be in because you can't go up or down. But if you go all the way down and you're on the bottom, then you can push up off the bottom and make it to the surface. So that's what rock, hitting rock bottom can be that if you use it that way. And most people do. Some people opt out, you know, this is it, this is the end, they take their life or, or, or go off the deep end in some other way. But if you use it that way, it can be an enormous, it can be a launch pad for you. And so many people who have done great things, that's exactly how they did it. They hit rock bottom and they used it. They popped right back up. That, um, that just makes me think of, there was an experience that I had on psychedelics. It was an ayahuasca ceremony and it was in a pretty dark time of my life. And, you know, that's, that's one plant medicine that can kind of just be a huge amplifier and show symbols of just what you're already going through. 
And so in that ceremony, I found myself in this um, terrible black sucking void. It was like, it was like there was like a, a black hole that was just trying to suck what I thought um was like you know all the goodness of me and all my good energy in retrospect i realized it was trying to suck away everything that wasn't important but it was super super uncomfortable i lost track of time i forgot that i was even in a ceremony and i couldn't you know i called out for jesus i called out for angels nobody was showing up and i don't know how long i was sitting in that but i got to kind of like a i guess an astral rock rock bottom and what was there was this, and this is kind of going back to your teaching on the Axis Mundi. What was there was this tiny little light, so small, like a pinhole in my heart center. There was no body <laughs> left. There was no personality. There was nothing except this tiny little light. And it was, it kept fading in and out of my awareness. And I realized that was all that I had in this place. And I focused in with everything that I had in my, my consciousness on this little light. And I, I came out of that ceremony with a bruise on my chest because I was, I was trying to pinch that light, like to not let it go. And in the minutes that kind of passed, once I found it, I used my will to grow it and grow it and grow it. And then by the time I, you know, it's a couple of years later, I was in your course. Um, I realized, oh, that was the sun. That was the sun. But there was so much um so much forgetfulness i guess you could say um and you know just stuff that was in the way of of me even seeing or experiencing that part of myself and from there i mean there was other events that happened but i was able to um, take the next steps that i needed because it was that solid it was that solid rock bottom just before finding that pinhole of light so yeah, that's, that's a really real teaching for, for me. And I think probably a lot of people watching this. Um, so just kind of coming to the end of our time together, what, what, what did we miss that you think is really important to get out there right now? I think that the most important thing right now is that do everyone go within. You kind of have to isolate yourself not permanently, of course, but but really turn away from the world, go within yourself and find that core of you. This is a, just so important right now. You have to focus on, on discipline uh, of making your spiritual practice, whether it's meditation or prayer, or however you approach it, that you want to be consistent with it. You want to be dedicated to it make it the central part of your life doesn't matter what else is going on this is the most important thing right now and as we do that then everything will open up it'll open up from the inside out and that's the greatest source of power and the power to live the power to to be the, the power of presence you might call it your presence will start to become more and more real more and more present and the world will see it you will feel it and everything in creation will respond to it but that's what's really important right now is to go within it's like jesus said go into your closet and pray and go into your closet and meditate tune out everything go within and when you think you're within go within even farther Keep going in and in and in, and you'll pop through. You'll see that little point of light like you saw, because that's you. Yeah. That's the impersonal part of you, but that's you. That's that individual spark of God that comprises the totality of you. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to put the link for your website and your offerings in the description so that if anyone watching this wants to follow up over where you are working and otherwise thanks Great. so much yeah also uh, i have a youtube channel so oh we'll I've put that in there too okay great <laughs> yes cool. okay thank All you right. thank you very much this has been a real joy